Nuclear weapons are quite ghastly, but they can potentially create a new cozy home for us. Remember, not on Earth, but on Mars. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk himself proposed nuking the Red Planet, and the man knows a thing or two about space, so what's the science behind it? Why do all talented scientists think Elon Musk's Mars idea is terrible? Let's find out in today's episode of the Alpha Tech Channel. Mars is cold, like 217 Kelvin cold. That's around minus 81 degrees Fahrenheit. Spending a day on Mars would be like living in Siberia in the winter. And there's an added bonus of having no atmosphere above you to breathe or protect you from UV rays. So probably don't book a ticket just yet. To heat the planet up the fast way? Drop thermonuclear weapons over the poles. This is what the CEO of SpaceX on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert said in 2015 and answered, this prompted Colbert to label Musk a supervillain. This isn't a joke because later on August 16th of 2019, Musk famously tweeted, nuke Mars, later adding t-shirts soon, and his promise t-shirts did indeed come soon after. A 2020 Russian news agency TASS article, whereby SpaceX's terraforming Mars strategy was questioned by a Russian space official, was shared with Musk via Twitter. The official stated, For a thermonuclear explosion on Mars Pole, one of the plans of SpaceX to have tangible results, more than 10,000 launches of missiles that can carry the largest payloads and are being developed now are needed. To which Musk replied, No problem. Well, 10,000 starships is not impossible with Musk. But how Elon Musk planned to be so crazy, well, would it work? Heating up the planet essentially fueling climate change on Mars could make it slightly more hospitable. Musk wants to detonate nuclear devices on Mars poles, vaporizing its frozen ice caps, releasing a colossal amount of water vapor and CO2 into the Martian atmosphere. This would cause a runaway greenhouse effect. As the temperature rises due to the greenhouse gases released by the explosions, the Martian rocks would heat up and outgas more CO2, which heats the planet more, releasing more CO2, and so on. This would lead to a world having a temperature similar to Earth, with a much thicker atmosphere and liquid water. All we would need to do is complete the transformation and get a few plants to pump out some oxygen and hey, presto, we have a new Earth. However, the plan has caused controversy among scientists. Musk seems too hasty. Let's be blunt, physicist Mikhail Kaku told Big Think when asked his opinion on how the red planet could even be remotely habitable. It will take centuries to terraform Mars. Kaku highlighted that Mars is huge, about half the size of our own planet, and that means you're going to need a gargantuan amount of firepower. Space nukes sound next level, but it's nowhere near Martian ice annihilation yet. Musk's plan has faced scrutiny from the scientific community. Bruce Jacoski of the University of Colorado Boulder and Christopher S. Edwards of Northern Arizona University, they published a paper in the journal Nature Astronomy in July 2018 arguing that no, there isn't enough carbon dioxide on Mars to terraform the planet. Studying existing technology and estimates of Mars' carbon dioxide stores, the paper's abstract paints a bleak picture. These results suggest there's not enough CO2 remaining on Mars to provide significant greenhouse warning were the gas to be emplaced into the atmosphere. In addition, most of the CO2 gas in these reservoirs is not accessible and thus cannot be readily mobilized. The pair estimated that the polar caps would be enough for around 15 millibars of atmospheric pressure. Vaporizing the carbon-rich sedimentary rocks from Mars' watery days would release around 12 millibars. For comparison, Earth's atmosphere at sea level is around 1,000 millibars. Musk shot back at the findings over Twitter. There's a massive amount of CO2 on Mars absorbed into soil that'd be released upon heating. With enough energy via artificial or natural sun fusion, you can terraform almost any large rocky body. Jakoski and Edwards responded to Musk by admitting that, yes, there may be more carbon dioxide up for grabs. Releasing the gas would be incredibly difficult, though, and would require new technology that doesn't exist yet. Something like a giant mirror as big as Mars could do the trick, or even releasing extra pollutants into the atmosphere. Neither of these are likely in the next few decades, nor are they likely to produce anything close to the SpaceX lobby photo. You'd still fall well short of a bar, Jakoski told Discover Magazine, but you would get some significant warming and significant pressure. 
According to other scientists, the nuke concept could be worse than ineffectual. It could backfire, ushering in a phenomenon known as nuclear winter, akin to the asteroid impact that killed the dinosaurs, wherein you generate so much dust and particles they literally block out a significant portion of the incoming sunlight, cooling down the planet. That's what client scientist Michael Mann of Penn State University told U.S. News & World Report via an email in 2015. American astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, when being asked about Elon Musk's idea about nuking Mars on the episode of the Joe Rogan podcast said, I don't think we should think of the idea as a literal thing, but just it's a general principle of what you want to accomplish. This may be true after all. Musk is the king of clever marketing. Look at Tesla and its zero marketing budget. Maybe the point of this isn't to actually nuke Mars, but instead get people excited about the possibilities of Mars. All of this combined means more people will want to be part of Musk's Starship voyages to the Red Planet. But if Starship is to be successful, is there a different way to terraform Mars so humans could someday live on it? There absolutely is, and you wouldn't even have to detonate a single bomb. However, terraforming the entire planet into an Earth-like habitat would have to be done over several millennia. Some have even suggested that such a project would last thousands of millennia. Here are three terraforming methods that have been proposed. Firstly, large orbital mirrors that would reflect sunlight and heat the Mars surface. NASA is working on a solar sail propulsion system that would use large reflective mirrors to harness the sun's radiation to propel spacecraft through space. If a mirror this size were to be directed at Mars, it could raise the surface temperature of a small area by a few degrees. Over a period of many years, the rise in temperature would release greenhouse gases such as chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, which you can find in your air conditioner or refrigerator. Another option for thickening the atmosphere of Mars and in turn raising the temperature of the planet would be to set up solar-powered greenhouse gas-producing factories. These greenhouse machines would mimic the natural process of plant photosynthesis, inhaling carbon dioxide and emitting oxygen. And finally, if it is possible to smash an asteroid of such enormous size into Mars, the energy of one impact would raise the temperature of the planet by 3 degrees Celsius. The sudden rise in temperature would melt about a trillion tons of water, which is enough to form a lake with a depth of one meter that would cover an area larger than the state of Connecticut. Several of these missions over 50 years could create a temperature climate and enough water to cover 25% of the planet's surface. Either way, Musk and his dog persistence might eventually get us to Mars. It won't be a comfortable life, but if his base succeeds, he will become the Martian founding father. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your likes in the comments section. Everyone's support is the motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.